Um, so thank you. Um, hi, everyone. And thank you, um, the conference organizers. So I give me the opportunity to talk today. So my name is Hao. Um, I'm from IMIT University um, from uh, Australia. Um, so my research and my group research is on um, Campylobacter hepaticus. Um, this is a bacteria which causes spotty liver disease in chickens. And um, we start we started this research um, five six years ago, and then we made a lot of progress on this um, area, which I'm going to show you. Um, but firstly, I'm going to talk about SLD first. What what is SLD, a spotty liver disease in chicken, because some of you may not uh, heard about it. Um, so spotty liver disease in chickens is a significant disease in a uh, poultry industry, um, especially in Australia, because it can cause um, mortality and also the uh, aid production deduction as well. So uh, in 1950, um, it was first reported in the USA and then it was reported in other countries. But about 20, 15, 20 years ago, it came back. And then now it's called problem for Australian uh, poultry industry. And then it's also reported in other countries, which I'm going to talk about it later. Um, so what did we do? Um, so the disease was um, reported 60 years ago but the cause of the disease um, still unknown. Until 2016, a group in the UK, um, Grosso, they isolated a new bacteria uh, from uh, SLD chickens, infected chickens. But they didn't go further to identify. And then um, shortly after that, our group had isolated the bacteria a new bacteria and then we went further and then we did all the biochemical test and we did all the genome sequencing and we um, can conclude this is a new bacteria which we named Gamblobacter hepaticus and the type strain is HV10. So uh, hepaticus means that it was isolated from uh, liver, it's hepaticus means liver and then we published. Then we also um, um, study and then we put it in chickens and then we um, also produce induction model which means that we put in chickens and then uh, they also reproduce disease uh, in layer hand and then the the model had been used later on so what's known about his uh, c hepaticus uh, campylobacter the bacteria we call uh, spotty liver disease in chicken um, we test in the um, LMH cells, is mean the, the liver cells, chicken liver cells, which is highly invasive compared to other Campylobacter, which uh, you may know other Campylobacter such as Campylobacter G29, Campylobacter uh, coli, which um, they call uh, food poisoning in human. And we also develop endpoint PCR and quantitative PCR to detect this bacteria. And we published and other group have used this uh, um, this method. So we had the rapid uh, method to differentiate as well with other Campylobacter. And then we also have the endpoint PISA to detect this bacteria. Um, and then we also optimize growth of C. hepaticus, but um, I'm going to show it later. And then we also do the genomics and pathogenicity studies of hepaticus. So what makes this one different from other Campylobacter? So for the cysteine at phylo genetic tree, um, as you can see, after do the cysteine at we made the tree and to compare with other Campylobacter. And as you can see in here, they group together uh, Campylobacter hepaticus and is they different from other Campylobacter. And we also did the uh, comparative genomics. And um, so Campylobacter hepaticus, they form a, a separate clade compared to other Campylobacter. Like Glossid is Campylobacter G29 and Campylobacter coli. But at um, um, Campylobacter G29 and Campylobacter coli, they call disease in human, but normally they are um, uh, not, they're not calling any disease in chickens. But um, in contrast, Campylobacter hepaticus, they call disease in chickens, but in layer birds. It means that the bird would give eggs, um, give eggs. So, but the hepaticus haven't been deported like call disease in human, but um, we haven't tested, but that's what we think. 
So the we did the three and um, we collected um, sample from different states. Um, Victoria, South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, and all states in Australia and New uh, Queensland. So they own, they form a separate clade here. They group together. And then we also have the um, genome from the UK. So we compare. And, and now we also have the um, genome from the US as well. We haven't included here yet. So when we do, we did the proteome comparisons, as you can see, most of them, they are closely um, similar. They are very similar within the purple color, but they are the train, the strains from Queensland. They are quite different with like you see is lower percent, uh, percentage, like similarity percentage. So when we did the genome sequencing, you also found the plasmid, which contain um, TETO gene, um, which you can know that uh, TETO is uh, responsible for theta cycling resistant. And um, so we had the report that um, from one of the states, uh, the disease at the moment, there's, um, they had to use uh, antibiotics to treat the disease. And in one of the states, they report that um, the, the chickens didn't respond to the treatment. So we may we think that maybe because the tetracycline resistant plasmid is make it resistant to the um, antibiotics yield. Um, and and then we did animal trials to um, compare the decrease of virulence of different uh, isolates. And as you can see in here, they um, they have different. Um, they went the bird challenge with the same dose. Um, the one of the strain, they call more disease than other, but but one of them can call disease as well. Um, we also did the pan genome um, to compare to see the virulent factors, and then we can see that um, there are four chemotaxis proteins, um, with the homology is uh, less than eighteen eight percent to other Campylobacter. So this may have this um, bacteria, which species can move to the liver because it's called the disease in the liver. But this need to be uh, confirmed in the lab. Um, and then we also found that um, liposaccharide locus, that is rearrangement, which I'm going to show later, like the um, rearrangement. Um, they have the um, glucoutilization uh, metabolism operon in here as well. Um, and then, but normally, um, Campylobacter cannot cannot um, use the glucose, but this is Campylobacter is different. So they have they have some changes in their genome, which make these differences. And we also did RNA sequencing to compare transcriptomics. So we compare between the one um, in vitro conditions. It means that we also grow them in the lab. And also in vitro, we, we put them in chickens. And then we compare we compare the hepaticus with grow in the lab and with grow in chicken. And to see whether any gene um, is spread um is spread more in the um in the in vitro compared to uh, in vivo compared to in vitro whether it's contribute to the violence or not so we did an isolation sequencing and then we did the um, differential expression analysis of the two conditions and as you can see here some some gene um up and down regulated with the um, for example fatty acids li lipid they um uh, up and uh, uh, um, uh, regulated, so it's may they may uh, contribute to the uh, pathogenicity of the um, Campylobacter hepaticus. So, for example, I listed in here. So we have we found the upregulation of copper transporting uh, ATP genes, uh, whether they have the role in copper spot or not, or they also have BHB metabolic genes as well, whether they. Uh, Thanks to this gene uh, upregulated, um, they can respond well to the limited uh, nutrients in bile that make them can survive in bile. They also um, so and then we also found other interesting things as well. And then, but interestingly, they we found that uh, down regulation of many flagella and chemotaxis genes with um, uh, because flagella also contribute to um, pathogenicity as well. But um, what we find that is in general, we find in this bacteria. I also um, would like to talk about our latest findings on SLD. So 
uh, we have a project to study the um, epidemiology uh, study um, of SLD. And then we collected a lot of samples from different um, farms. And then by, by accident, we detect a new species, Gambloptor hepaticus. Um, why uh, is by accident? Because um, we had the PISA to detect, and then the PISA also positive. So we didn't know that it is a new species. But then we did the genome sequencing, and then when we do we did assembly, like at the routing one, and then we found the genome that is different, um, they have um, bigger GC, uh, higher GC content. So hepaticus have only 28%, this one have 30%. Uh, and then we did other tests to confirm that it's a new species. So the same species causing the same, different species causing the same problems. Um, the same disease, but like um, like human as well, uh, Gambler-Wachter G29 and Gambler-Wachter coli, they are different species, but they both cause disease in human. We also made progress on uh, improved culture conditions for grow of Gambler-Wachter hepaticus as well, which I'm going to talk about it later. And we also demonstrated that um, C. hepaticus can enter a viable but non-culturable state. And then we and um, we also use experimental disease induction models SLD, which I'm going to present later. So um, what's new uh, recently about SLD research? So last year, um, so we did we detected in Australia like few years ago, five years ago for hepaticus for uh, B list we detected last year. Um, and then USA, two years ago, there's a paper also described, um, they detected. And uh, UK, they detected like um, 2015. And then other country also just detected, uh, just reported as well. Uh, New Zealand also published, um, and Jordan, uh, recently Jordan. And I have students from Vietnam, and then they also found, um, also found uh, T. hepaticus in uh, uh, spot liver disease, but they haven't confirmed yet. Um, but that's what we know. So what's about the new species C. Campylobacter bilis? Um, so as I said, it's identified using ruling culturing and whole genome sequencing. So they're closely related to C. hepaticus. Um, but based on phenotype, like we did a lot of um, biochemical tests and then also genomic DNA, we um, compare the genome and we found that it is the uh, new species, which um, we only detect in two states. And normally it's hepaticus if we detect if they, the, the chicken has HLD uh, disease. And then we did we put in the bird and then we found the disease, confirmed that it's a cause of the disease. And then we uh, we put the time strain, we already submitted um, the time strain to uh, ATCC and NCPC. And then the paper um, international, we submit the paper to International Journal of Systematic and Evolutionary Microbiology. And then it's in, uh, in progress. Um, hopefully it's gonna be published soon. And then we also improve culturing of C. hepaticus. This is a big progress. So um, our student, PhD student, um, he developed a, um, meter with a liquid meter so normally like a few years ago when we did to do the trial we have to uh, grow them on the air plate um because this um fastidious uh, bacteria they're very hard to grow um but it's it's, it's take a lot of time for example because if we work on um one chicken we need one place if we work, if we do the trial on um 100 chickens, we have to uh, grow a lot of place. Um, and then because this bacteria is very, they very sensitive and then very prone to contamination. So we have to grow a much, much more than that. Uh, you could not believe how much, how many places we have to use for its trial. But since the discovery of the culturing, liquid culturing method, um, it's make our life easier. So um, we put um, different additives to produce blood broth and then make it tenfold higher growth, um, uh, which is very significant. Uh, so we can make from 10 to the 8, 3, 10 to the 8, to 3, uh, 10 to the 9, which is enough for um, to put in chicken. And then we put in chicken and then it's also produced disease as well. 
um, so they can uh, produce a disease. And then we already published in a scientific report um, we just published recently last month about the method. And then we use this for um, our following animal trials, like to study the vaccine for this uh, bacteria. And then this um, student also um, uh, work on the um, to see whether this one can enter a viable but non-culturable states. It means that they are there, but they're not dead. They're still there, um, but they survive. Um, and then if when the condition is good, they can come back and thrive. Um, so uh, the, we found that the V, V, B, and C cells are cocoid form. And then when the condition is good, they come back and then it can grow. And you can see in here for 65 days, um, uh, you can see they still alive. Uh, so this, this can explain why we can see, see uh, they still survive in the farm, even um, uh, even after the farm that from the farm, they can be transferred from farm to farm as well, or even in the very harsh environment, um, uh, the birds still can have spotty liver disease. But you know, disease bacteria in the lab, they are very hard to grow. Um, so our uh, other SLD progress, uh, that's we, um, another student, she uh, developed ELISA assays um, with now. So before we developed PISA assay, uh, we detect the DNA of the bacteria. So if we collect sample, we detect the DNA, we don't know that um, whether it is a current infection or past infection. But for ELISA assay, then we can, so this assay, you use the anti, uh, anti um, we use the serum, we, we, we check whether their uh, blood, whether contain anti C hepaticus, then we know that whether it is a past in infection or current infection, uh, if you use both. Um, so we can then, so ELISA can use to uh, to see the previously exposed to hepaticus because it is already um, uh, previously exposed, the uh, PISA cannot be detected. And then we can see the uh, uh, IgY responses. So there's a paper also have been published um, in even pathology. And then we start a new AIC linkage project. It is the time of the government uh, funding from Australia with the um, with other uh, company and also the London School of Hygiene in um, UK. So we developed the um, vaccine again uh, CG29 and we hope that we can, it can work in hepaticus as well, which may on block the end glycan surface carbon hybrid. Um, so I would like to um, acknowledge my team, um, uh, Professor uh, Rob Moore, and also other um, members of uh, the left from MIT, uh, Ben, um, Tan Student Khan and Chitra, and also our industry partner, we, um, they collected samples for us, and then we also did the trial together, uh, like uh, Peter Scott, Arif, and Tyron uh, team, and then other uni, Melbourne Uni for the bioinformatics together. And thank you for funding from Poultry Hub. Uh, so um, we received several funding from Poultry Hub for our study, and also Australian eggs to study the toxics, um, uh, toxins in um, produced in Campylobacter hepaticus, and also the um, uh, poultry CRC. And thank you for listening. <laughs>